Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Model Guy as we take on part two of Mustang Madness. We're going to start this episode by correcting the only real issue with the Tamiya kit, and that's the boxed-in gear base. If you're not familiar with the Mustang, the gear bay itself was not completely boxed in as it's shown here. Instead, there should be a wing spar that's visible a little bit further back. I simply extended the ribs of the kit using some styrene pieces and used another styrene piece for the wing spar. Unfortunately, it wasn't until I started building the Airfix wheel bay that I realized I recreated the wrong spar on the Tamiya kit. But for how visible that's really going to be, I wasn't too worried to fix it. So rather than spend $40 on a resin gear bay, this might be the route you want to take. Like most Tamiya products in the 90s and forward, this kit snapped together with really no issues. Other than a few small seams that had to be corrected and filled, it was a pretty much a drama-free build. In hindsight, I wish I built this kit last out of the three, just to have a little bit of a palette cleanser after some of the stuff I dealt with with the Airfix kit. At this point in the build, I'm ready for primer and paint after only three nights. Next up, we have Airfix. The Airfix kit may have a better cockpit and wheel bay than the Tamiya Mustang, but that's where the improvements end. There's really no reason you should be using epoxy putty to close up gaps in a modern kit. This is my fourth Airfix Mustang that I've built, and all four kits have had these same issues and that same gap underneath. I had a chance to look at the new Airfix 124 Hellcat in a box a few weeks ago, and quality control is something I don't think Airfix has heard of. They could have at least made sure that the two fuselage shafts were not warped. Mustang Wheel Bay Colors. That is a can of worms to open. To make a long story short, Army Air Force aircraft were originally supposed to have a corrosion-proof paint in the wheel wells of their aircraft. However, to speed up production of the P-51, it was granted for North American to not fully paint the wheel bays on their aircraft. So you'll see several photos where only the wing spar itself is painted. And the reason that one spar is painted and the rest of the wheel well is left in a natural metal is because it's a dissimilar metal. So what will happen is if you put two different types of metal together, you'll get a corrosion. And anytime you have corrosion in an aircraft, that's bad. Apparently, this continued to be an issue in the Mustang. So later on in production, they went back to an entirely painted wheel well. A large number of the photos I found in forms showed that rear wing spar painted and the rest of the bay natural metal. So that was the direction I chose to go with this Mustang. At least I don't have to worry about sanding this part down to get it to fit. There's a good gap there already. One way to always improve the look of a model is to drill out the gun barrels. I'm using PCB drill bits that I got off Amazon for about 10 bucks for the whole pack. Airfix and Edward both modeled their gun barrels this way. It eliminates any seam between the barrels that you have to clean up. With Airfix though, that just means more cleanup elsewhere. Airfix is the only brand out of the three that allows you to set control surface position. They're also the only ones that have you build the horizontal stabilizer out of two separate pieces. One thing that I've noted on all of the Airfix Mustangs I've built is that you can only get the leading edge and the outer edge to line up properly, and the inner edge and trailing edge are overstepping. This means that you're going to have another gap under the horizontal stabilizer that you'll have to fill. One of my favorite sayings that I've seen on forums is that there is no such thing as an unbuildable kit, just some kits one may consider not worth building. In the case of this kit, maybe you're somebody who's on a tight budget that wants a more accurate cockpit and wheel bay and doesn't want to spend the money on resin. If that's the case, this is the Mustang you'd want to be building. Just know that you're going into it with a lot more work to be done. I'm using three different types of putty on this build to fill these gaps. For working on bare plastic, one of the better ones is the Tamiya White Putty. You can wipe away the excess with lacquer thinner. Once it's dry, it's completely sandable as well, and it doesn't come away in chunks like perfect plastic putty can. To summarize this Airfix Mustang, I think it's right now probably your best option on the market for a D Mustang if you're on a budget and don't want to spend the money on an Edward Mustang for their Profi Pack. However, like all the kits that Edward does, I would wait until they drop the weekend edition of the Mustang before spending money on another Airfix Mustang. Or maybe you're someone that doesn't mind all the cleanup and corrections you'll have to make down the road. Like the short shot I have here on the elevator that I had to correct with the putty. Unfortunately, all these issues translate to the new filletless tail Mustang because it's the same mold they use for that kit as well. Now we'll move on to the third and final Mustang, the Edward version. One thing you'll notice immediately about the Edward Mustang is that their gear bay detail is a lot more crisp than Airfix. 
The wing spire was warped in this kit, but that's an easy fix because I used the locating pins on the wing as a jig. That way it could stay in place while I glued the bottom piece of the wing bay in place. One thing that'll happen with Edward kits is if you misalign something or if it's not set properly, you do set issues for yourself downstream that'll have to be corrected. The front spire was also warped, so I decided to build up the wing box just to make sure everything was square and true. Luckily, this spire is bending towards the next piece, so it just pretty much holds itself in place. Just make sure you're doing test fitting and then some more test fitting before you finalize things with glue. The second issue I ran into with this kit is that the cockpit floor was seated too low in the fuselage halves when I glued them together. Because there is no pins to locate the front of the cockpit floor, I thought that it sat in a gap that was set in the bottom of the fuselage halves. That gap is for the top of the wheel bait that I'm putting on here, otherwise you won't be able to get the wings to snap into place. Make sure you paint that as well because you're not able to once the wings are in place. I'm using a Molotov chrome pen here to paint the back of the lights before I glue the wing halves together. This is a better shot of the wings binding before closing with the fuselage halves, and you can see the top of that wheel bait snagging in the bottom of the cockpit floor. In the end, I just put a little bit of pressure on the bottom of the cockpit floor to push it out of place so the wings would seat. The guns on the Edward Mustang dropped into place with no fit issues at all. The biggest issue with the Edward Mustang is getting the cowling seam set properly. There are no locating pins here, and it's part of the fuselage half, so you kind of have to gauge it by eye to get it to seat properly. Cleanup is hard because if you put too much pressure on the seam, it pops apart and you have to re-glue it. After using the included masks on the outside of the canopy, I'll use the leftover as a template to create a mask for the inside of the canopy. This saves the step of spraying the interior color on the outside of the canopy first and allows me to use a primer. As always, any comments or criticisms you have for the video, please leave them in the comments section as that helps me improve and bring you better content. And if you've not done so already, click on that subscribe button and set the bell so you get all notifications from this channel. One area I wasn't expecting a problem with this kit was getting the canopy to sit properly. It's a little bit narrower than the fuselage have, so you have to use a little bit of force to get that to sit properly. And anytime you squeeze the fuselage, it'll pop off, so just keep that in mind. Speaking of the canopy, all the canopy pieces in my kit had broken off the tree in transport. Luckily, none of them had been scratched. Moving on to the paint, one thing that has always eluded me is a perfect natural metal finish. The biggest part is prep work. Any flaws will show through in the primer. So I first laid down a coat of Mr. Surfacer 1500 black just to see if there were any imperfections. Once the primer had dried and the imperfections were corrected, I then followed up with a coat of X22 clear. Once I had the clear coat on, I then followed up immediately with a wet coat of Mr. Leveling Thinner just to make sure that clear coat dri dried to a nice even gloss. You can use AK's Extreme Metal Black Base that'll also dry with a nice shine, but I thought this clear coat would dry with a better shine to it. Having done all this work though, I found a better option was to use Mr. Colors Uno Black. If you do it in two thin coats and then a wet coat at 23 PSI, followed immediately by a coat of Mr. Leveling Thinner, you will get a shine that cannot be met by another brand. One thing I wanted to mention about AK Extreme Metal Paints that doesn't seem to be talked about too much is that they do not like being handled when they're dry. On all three of my Mustangs, the paint would rub off on leading edges and trailing edges anywhere where there was a sharp corner. The paint didn't seem to want to stick. And of course, out of the three Mustangs I had painted, the worst one for paint rubbing off was the Edward Mustang. And this led to a huge disaster. Please keep watching so you can avoid this because it will cost you. I've had to strip kits in the past for repainting, and the three times I've done it, it was on three Tamiya kits. I used Tamiya Lacquer Thinner on a brush to simply soak and brush the paint off. I did not soak the model itself. There were two variables this time with this stripping. One was that it was an Edward kit, so it was a different plastic, and two, it was using AK's enamel metal paints. With all these different chemicals going together, there was bound to be a reaction, and what happened was the plastic on the Edward Mustang ended up blistering. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure you check in next time for the next episode of Mustang Madness.
great. Now it looks like this Mustang has genital herpes.